Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word this day. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Matthew 4, 18-22. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called to them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now ask the children to come forward for the time of children and of youth as we sing Jesus' love. Jesus was walking along the shoreline and he hollered at two fishermen 
Peter and Andrew. And he called them and said, come follow me. I'm going to make you a fisher, fishers of men instead of fish. Can you imagine catching a person fish? Not that that probably hasn't happened in my head. But um, it's, that's kind of an odd statement, isn't it, to be a fisher of men? But Jesus was asking those men to follow him, and they did. They dropped what they were doing, and they went with Jesus to learn about Jesus' um, teaching so that they could carry it on after Jesus left this world. So Jesus has the same call for us, and we need to be prepared for that. We also need to be equipped, and Jesus gives us the Bible to follow so that we're equipped. And we have to go where there are people to be able to talk to people about God. And we also have to be patient because everyone that we talk to about Jesus is, is not going to follow Jesus. But some people will. And then if we talk to someone and they turn their lives over to Jesus, we're a fisher of men just like the disciples were. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's say a prayer. Now we 
we do know from stories later on that they are Hebrew and they have all been raised as good uh, Jewish boys and then men uh, within the synagogues of that time. So they've had some exposure to the, to the Torah, to the scriptures of that day, the first five books of our Old Testament. They had some familiarity with that, all four of these disciples. But they were not, they were not priests, they were not religious scholars, they were not theologians in any sense of the matter. They were plain, ordinary fishermen. It is such a thing, Jacob. I mean, you know, fishermen are pretty pretty up high on my list. I know on your list, but they that's that's all they were. They were not these great religious figures. And as you read this original call, the first thing that always strikes me when I read this call is Jesus comes up uh, first to Andrew and to Simon. And he says, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And then immediately he goes to James and John. These are two sets of brothers, by the way. He then goes to James and John, and I assume uh, Andrew and Simon are following him along because they said they were going to follow him. He goes to James and John and he said, come follow me. And they actually left their father sitting in the fishing boat ready to go out and they go and they follow Jesus. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I read this story is, why did they do that? Well, what could they have possibly have been thinking? You know, now, if, if, if they had seen some great miraculous acts of Jesus, if they had heard Jesus expounding upon uh, life and the soul and the afterlife and heard some of his great teachings, then it might sort of make sense, you know, that, that yeah, okay, they're going to follow him now. But we don't have any of that in the gospel text anywhere. This is the first encounter that we see and hear of in the Bible between Jesus and his disciples. And he walks up to them and he simply says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Obviously play on their profession, on their vocation of who they were. They fished for fish all the time. And he said, no, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And they dropped their nets, they left their boat, and they followed him. For the rest of their lives, they followed him. And they followed in Jesus' way. Why? Why would they do that? What's, what's going on here? I mean, they must have been really impressed by Jesus or by his request to and saying fishers of men or both. But still, yeah, who among us, who among anyone you would know, a stranger comes up to you and says, follow me, regardless of what else they say, who's going to do that? Why? What, well, what's going on, you know? And, and by the way, this phrase, fishers of men, that Harper sent me about this morning, what does that mean? Anyway, that's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. This morning. Shall we pray? Gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Not used to this robe, now I'm probably going to trip. But anyway. Yeah. Did these four men, Andrew, Simon, James, John, did they actually know what it was that Jesus was calling them to do? Did they know everything they were going to be getting themselves into in the next several years, uh, really for the rest of their life? They left everything they had. They left their the vocation, they left their families, and they followed Jesus. Did they know what was going to happen? I really doubt it. How could they have known where Jesus was going to be leading? How could they have known what was going to happen to them? How could they have known anything at all about what they were getting themselves into when they decided to follow Jesus? Well, my friends, I don't think they could have known at all. They didn't have the slightest idea what they would be getting themselves into in the next few years of their lives. But even though 
They could not have known what they were getting themselves into, where Jesus was going to lead them, what exactly was going to be happening to them. They still followed Jesus. They left everything and they followed Jesus. Now maybe it's true that they knew who Jesus was. Maybe they had heard stories of what he had said and what he had done in his ministries. Uh, even though it's still very early on in his ministries and there are not that many of those stories that would have been going around yet. But maybe they did. They might have known who he was and had an idea or a sense of what he was, but they could not have known anything about where he was going or what he was going to be asking them to do in their lives. But what did they do? They left everything and they followed. They didn't know where they were going. But they must have had a sense of who this fellow Jesus was. And he called to them and they made a decision. They followed him. They didn't have all the information that they might have needed to know what the outcome of that decision would be. But they made that decision. And they followed. Even when they did not know, they decided to go. So the question I always have is, my friends, can we do that? Can you do that? Can we go before we really know what we're getting ourselves into. Can we decide to follow Jesus even if we don't know exactly where He's going to be leading us or what's going to be required of us? Can we follow Jesus even when we don't have all the information to know what the outcome might be? Those are pretty tough questions that all Christians face. And I bet you have faced, I certainly have faced in my lifetime, leaving your previous life and following someone when you're not sure where they're going or what you're getting yourself into. That's not easy. That's an extremely difficult thing to do. Even if that someone is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior that you've heard about, read about all of your lives. It's not an easy thing to do. But those four men, those first four disciples, they decided to go. They decided to follow Christ's call, even though they didn't know. They did not know what it was going to mean for them and for their lives. And so did other folks that we read about all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Folks like Abraham and Isaiah, way back in the Old Testament, and so many others in the Bible. And so many other Christians throughout history since the time of Christ as well. God can use people. God can use anyone who is willing to go to follow God, to follow the ways of Jesus. Even, even if we don't know where it's going to take us or what it might mean for us in the future. So once again, I ask, as Christians, can I do that? Can you do that? Can we as a church do that? Can we decide to follow Jesus even if we don't know exactly where we're going, where Jesus is going to lead us? Can we decide to follow where Jesus is leading us even when we don't have all the information that we might need to know what the outcome is going to be five years from now, or 10 years from now, or 20 years from now, or 50 years from now. Can we go before we know? And I ask you that, my friends, because Jesus is calling us. Jesus is calling you today. Jesus is calling you to take His love into this world and to touch people with God's love in very specific ways. Jesus is calling me and is calling you, each one of us in this sanctuary this morning. Jesus is calling each of you to catch 
men or catch women, catch children for him, for God, for Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus is calling all of us to be fishers of men. So how do we respond? Do we say, which I've said many times in my life, Lord, I'm not too sure about this. Or do we say, no, let me think about that for a while. Or we probably say, as I've said many times in my life, I'll get back to you later on that. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll get back to you later. Or do we go? Do we do what Jesus is calling us to do and go? Even when we're not sure what it might mean for us or where it might lead us this year, next year, the following year. You know, I'm afraid as Christians, so many of us, and I certainly fall into that category, so many of us, when Jesus calls, we're too cautious. We're just too cautious. We want to gather all the information. We want to know. We want to know everything about what we're being called to do. And we often just take too long to respond. Or we end up not responding at all. Too many times when it comes to following Jesus, we're just too careful. Maybe that's, that's a part of being Presbyterian, being careful. You know, you got you to take it easy. Too many times we want to know, we want to know exactly where we're headed. And we want to know how long it's going to take us to get there, right? I mean, you don't want to jump into something and not know how long you're going to be in the middle of it. But that's what the disciples did. That's what Jesus is calling us to do. You know, instead, you know, wouldn't we rather, wouldn't we rather have a map? You're getting ready to go somewhere and you want a map. You want to map out the route. And you know, you want to know how long, about how long is it going to take us to get there? Where is the end point of it? Or even better yet today, of course, you want a GPS system. You know, you want the GPS system that can actually talk to you and can tell you, you know, turn here, turn there. Yeah, you're going to go, oh, look, it tells me I'll be there in four hours and 43 minutes. Look, you know, okay. You know, doesn't that make us feel a lot more secure? You know, when we have that, that kind of, uh, of, of security, when we know exactly how long it's going to take us to get there and all the turns that we want to make and everything else. My friends, I spent most of my life tiptoeing around Jesus' call to ministry. Oh, I stick my toe in every once in a while. You know, I do a little bit here or a little bit there. But I did not completely fall. How about you? We might say we're willing to follow Jesus wherever He might lead us, but when it's time to put action into those words, often we hold back. Say, well, maybe this is just not the right time. You know, most of you know, I was 56 years old. 56 years old! When I first went to seminary, I finally listened to the call. And I went to seminary at 56 years old and became a minister. So maybe it's never too late for any of us. Who knows? Uh, we might say that we're willing to do anything it takes for the church to grow or for folks in the community to experience God's love. But when specific actions are recommended, or dare I say it, when Jesus calls us to specific actions that we need to be taking, oftentimes we hold back. We say, well, let me get some more information about that. Let me find out what it is that's going to happen if I do this. Instead of just following. We want to hold back. We want to wait. Just as I did for 56 years. We might not want to appear as Christians, of course, to be good followers of Jesus. Always ready uh, to follow Him, but do we really act like it each and every day of our lives? And if we don't, is there some way we can overcome that? Is there some way we can really go anytime Jesus calls us to follow? Can we get to where we are active followers of Christ 
always ready to follow wherever Christ might lead and do whatever Christ might call us to do. Can we truly become fishers of men? Fishers of people. Can we, good Presbyterians, can we, even us, follow Jesus even if we don't know exactly where we're going or exactly what we're going to be called to do? We don't know what we're getting ourselves into. Can we do that? Well, that's a tough order. That is tough, especially for us who tend to like to know uh, what we're getting ourselves into. Don't you want to know what we're getting ourselves into? Don't you want to know where it's going to go, where it's going to lead? But you know what? It's tough. So, my friends, can we get to a point in our personal lives and as a church, a little bitty church here in a little bitty town, where we are willing to go to follow Christ even before we know what all it entails. Even before we have all the information. Or we step out in faith. Because you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that God can use us if we're willing to go. If we're willing to follow Jesus Christ. Even if we don't know where it's going to lead us. Uh, even if we don't know what it might mean for us, God can still use us if we're willing to follow. So the question, I guess, is uh, can we do that? Can we really do that? Look around. Aren't, aren't we too few? You know, there's too few of us. We can't really do anything. Wait, look, we're, we're too old, aren't we? This is set for a few of us. We're, we're too old in here. We can't do anything, right? We're, we're just too old. Uh, we're too poor. We don't have enough money. Well, it takes a lot of money, doesn't it? I mean, we're, we're too poor. Uh, we can't do that. We're too lacking in so many things. Maybe so. But God is still calling us. God is still calling you. And God is calling you. And God is calling you and you and you and you and you. Yeah, you're awake for that, aren't you? Yeah. It's over here. So point at me. I know. God is calling us to follow Him. God is calling us to become fishers of men without even really knowing what that means. What does that mean? I still haven't explained it. I don't know what it means for certain. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. And I'm standing up here trying to tell you <laughs> God is calling us to be fishers of people. Maybe that's a better phrase. Uh, that's what He's calling. He's calling all of us without really knowing what that means. And I don't really know exactly what that's going to mean for me in my life when I'm standing up here in front of you. And I, this is even sticking my toe in a little bit further than I had in those 56 previous years of my life. But I still don't know what tomorrow holds or next week or next year. But I know that God is calling me just as He's calling each and every one of us. Um, because He's calling us to the way. He's calling us to the truth. He's calling us to the life. Shown by the example of Jesus Christ that we read about in our Scripture. And that's the only way, my friends, that we're going to be the people that God's calling us to be is if we follow that way. If we follow that truth. And if we follow that example of Jesus Christ. It's the only way, only way we're going to be the people God's calling us to be. It's the only way we're going to be the church that God is calling us to be. Getting past that idea of having to know before we go is not easy. And you know there's only one way I know of to do that. And that's through prayer. It takes a lot of prayer to get to that point to where you can go before you have to know everything about where you're going to be led. And it also takes commitment. But prayer, prayer is essential. So my friends, my suggestion for you is that you pray that you can be the person who can respond with, with the Jones' favorite hymn line, Here I am, Lord. Use me.
here I am. Pray that this church can become a church that does not respond to the call of Christ with excuses, but with actions, with stepping out and saying, okay, we'll try it, we'll do it, we'll see. And we step out in faith. And pray especially that we can become individuals in the church who can go before we know. Pray that you and you and you and I and all of us in here can become fishers of men. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us respond to our word this morning by rising once again either in body or in spirit and singing together the first and the fourth verses of our hymn of response which is, of course, has to be Jesus Calls Us, which is number 592 in your hymn. Uh, shall we rise together and sing the first and the fourth person of Jesus Calls Us?
Lord of the universe, Lord of creation, Lord of us all. You are the God who calls. You call the mountains and the oceans into being with a single command. You called your people Israel to be faithful to you with a special covenant. You called your disciples to follow you on the seashore that day. And you call us to be your children. For you are our God. We ask a special prayer this day on all of us who have a call from you this day. Allow us to hear and to follow you. Almighty God, is it, it is with a spirit of humility and of, of hope that we offer you our prayers. At this time, we ask you to be with us in those places where we feel the darkness of our lives. From nations that are wrought with so much violence and sorrow, such as happening now in Haiti and Afghanistan, to your very creation that is crying out for mercy and restoration, Lord, we ask that you heal those places. We ask that you heal those places where greed and division and disease seek to destroy. For we know the needs of your people and this earth are vast and deep. And it is only you who can truly meet them. And this day we also ask a special prayer for those that we have mentioned by name. And for all those that we hold dear in our minds and hearts. Lift them up. Fill them with your love and peace. And our God, as we go from this place to our different lives, our very corners of the community and the world, and to all of our unique understandings of you and who you are, help us to face all of our neighbors with humility and hope, always holding on to the truth that we find in our faith, that we find in this body of believers, and most of all, in the truth that we find in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught all of us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It has now become our custom here at First Presbyterian to not pass the offering plates among the congregation during Sunday worship. But instead, we, we leave the offering plates on the table at the back of the sanctuary, and on the, the next to the door before you leave, if you did not have an opportunity to drop your tithe or offering in those plates as you came in, you still have that opportunity as you leave this day. And once again, the entire church and the minister, this small ministry of Jesus Christ thanks you for continuing to support that ministry that's ongoing right here in our own town of St. Genevieve. Now hear this offertory blessing for those tithes that have already been given and those offerings yet to be given. Almighty God, we bring before you this day our tithes and our offerings. We ask that you bless and that you accept them. And that you bless and that you accept each one of us and our actions on your behalf. That they may be used to continue to carry out your ministry in this community and throughout this world. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. When we say that word consecrated, we're saying that we expect God to accept the gift of our life and to use that as we do our best to follow Him in the way, to the truth, and the lie. This is a very short hymn, but it has six verses. So we're going to sing verse 1, 
5 and 6 of Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. It's number 597 in your hymnal. So let us rise one last time, either in body or in spirit, and sing verse 1, 5, and 6 of 597.